Hello! Ah, I'm really out of practice at this. Um, it's me, mostly working human form Dan Schiffman person thing. Here live on uh, Fridays, every Friday, although I haven't been here since sometime before June 27th. Um, I am seeing some comments in the chat saying audio good, video good. I'm going to lower my background music. That's Tori the Dog by Adam Blau. <laughs> Random song <laughs> playing in the background. I'm here, I'm back. Uh, I'm seeing a chat going. I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, let's see. So what, what's going on here? Um, thank you for tuning in. My name is Dan. I forgot how to pronounce my last name. It's something like Schiffman. <laughs> and I attempt, when I'm not falling off of a bicycle, to be here uh, once a week, every Friday, doing some creative coding fun times on the internet. Now, I don't want to... Um, I could easily, by accident, spend the next two hours talking about all of the different uh, exciting and intriguing and fascinating medical experiences I've been through in the last two months. I think I will come back if anybody's actually interested um, in some of that stuff just to kind of like uh, fill in some of those gaps. Maybe towards the end of the li live stream I can answer some questions or just talk about what's going on. I am wearing a compression sleeve. There is no cast here. My elbow does move. I did break my elbow. I did also break this wrist, but I... Um, I also had my funny bone removed, or actually moved. So this is important because I don't know. I'm not, I don't know that I was ever any funny at all. But something might be off. So there is no funny bone. You might actually know it's not a bone. It's something called the ulnar nerve, which is a nerve that passes around the back of your elbow, um, and it can get aggravated or entrapped. And this is what happened to me after the accident as a separate complication where I lost. Now, see, I'm doing it. I'm talking about the whole thing. But I, anyway, I lost complete feeling in these two fingers and use of this hand. And so anyway, my ulnar nerve was moved from here now to here. So I can like get the funny bone sensation. Oh, yeah, that actually worked if I tap right there. It's really weird. Uh, OK, I can also do the robot very well because I don't have full range of motion yet, but I'm doing a lot of physical therapy. I will come back to answer questions about this. Ah, OK. Um, this is not a medical stream, why LeVay, who is uh, um, um, in the chat. Okay, wait, where's my water? I'm a little bit late because I, I don't have any coffee or any tea today. I usually, ooh, the other thing is I'm very weak, but I can open this. So I did teach uh, three classes this week, live in person here at New York University. That gave me the confidence to come back, and I am now making a commitment to be here uh, every Friday. There will be some Fridays that I will miss. So actually, one of the first things I want to mention, oh, ads are coming up on this computer. I have a lot of things that I want to talk about. A lot being two. <laughs> Maybe more than that. But one of the things I want to just start with is, oh, I'm saying I'm going to be here every Friday. I haven't settled on a time. It's so important, you know, when you, when you like read things about how to be a content creator in, two th what's the year? 2017. You know, you must establish, you know, build an audience. How do you market? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. But I am told it's really good to establish a regular weekly time, of which I have never been able to do in the last, how long have I been doing this? Two years, I think. Ah, it's a little, a little sore here. Okay. I can't do this. It's very uncomfortable. Okay. I, uh, uh, okay. But, ah, okay. So, I'm doing the thing where I say, okay, okay, all the time again. Anyway. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of people here, I'm being told. I'm going to just check. I, it's a little bit vain for me to check, but I'm a little bit curious. I'm doing the thing where I ah! Oh, no, no, no. The audio came on on this computer. In my, uh, I have to turn the audio off on this computer, and I can't see how many people are here. Oh, there's 500 people here. That's a great number. That's perfectly, that's a, that's, that's a, a regular, perfectly reasonable, normal number. Okay. Uh, i got to go back here to this chat. All right, so I would like to establish a regular time. And uh, if I go to uh, twitter.com slash Schiffman, uh, I put up recently a, a poll, I thought. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, so if you, um, this is the link to it. So if you want to go to strawpoll.com, hopefully somebody can just, uh, who has privileges, can paste this in the chat. Strawpoll.com slash YPE3ZRWC. 
Woohoo, that's a nice URL. Uh, you can, I'm just trying to get a sense of what's best for people, but honestly, I might do a different time every Friday, so just stay tuned. Friday morning, I'll usually post the time or I'll tweet about it on Thursday if you're looking for the time. But it's definitely, this semester is going to be Fridays. I have a, I could tell you about all my schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And every once in a while, I like to do a surprise extra bonus live stream. I had all these people lined up, not all, I had three or four people lined up to do guest spots in August. And when I was healing and thought I would be able to come back and then I had this extra complication and I had to have another surgery. So that all fell apart. Um, but hopefully I'll get some of those guest spots coming and those will be other times during the week as well or just videos that will appear on your feed if they're not live streamed. Okay, so you can come here and let's just check the results out of curiosity. Looks like people like the, uh, for the most part, like the later time, but we'll see. Okay, so if I do every Friday, there are a couple Fridays where I might not be here. One of which I really want to highlight and mention. I'm really excited to tell you about something called Processing Community Day. This is an event for people to gather in person, really for the first time. Processing as a project has been around since 2001. I've talked about this before, uh, started by Casey Reese and Ben Fry at the MIT Media Lab. In fact, Processing, the first Processing Community Day will be at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, on October 21st in Boston, I will be there uh, and you can Purchase a ticket if you are able to come uh, here at this website. The website is day.processing.org. And when I say purchase a ticket, it's very reasonably priced uh, at, and you click here at, um, I think it's $15. But I, anyway, you can find it yourself. Uh, and um, some things that I want to mention about it. I, in theory, am <laughs> going to do a live, I mean, this is live, but live in person coding train episode. I don't have no idea what that's going to be. Uh, ben Fry, Casey Re Lauren McCarthy and Casey Reese will be there. Uh, Eva Diaz will be there. Fathom Information Design will be there. Johanna Hedva, Sidet Harry, all sorts of wonderful people. You can apply to give a lightning talk if you're interested. And I should mention that uh, Taeyun Choi, uh, it, who is the uh, founder of the School for Poetic, one of the co-founder of the School for Poetic Computation that I've talked about, that I've recorded uh, many videos at, um, is uh, organizing, is the, is, the, is, or, is the organizer of uh, Processing Community Day. So if you, I would highly encourage you to check out uh, his Medium post where he wrote about the uh, kind of ideas behind Community Day and what it's about. So I, I could go on and on and on about this, but I wanted to uh, mention it. Um, Mention it. Okay, any uh, questions? Oh yeah, whoops, oh so I forgot. Thank you, somebody, <laughs> I think I gotta turn this off. Uh, I don't know where, even where to see it now. If I click on here, no, that's send a super chat. Where do I look at it? Here, okay, hold on. Ah, super chat, okay. Um, thank you, Jamie Nichols. So I forgot, I meant to turn this off because I was sort of curious about it. Uh, Tayun in the ch is in the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, hold on. Am I back? I can't tell. I'm waiting for somebody to see. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do anything until I... Oh, we're back. Okay, I saw somebody say we're back. Okay, um, so hopefully I don't know what's going to happen here if this is going to end up getting chopped up into a million. I, this always seems to happen. Whenever I'm not using the computer and stuff for a while, it comes back. and I, The fact that it crashed just now, and actually it crashed on me when I was getting set up a couple times, and I was just like... Let's not worry about it. I restarted the computer. The fact that it crashed on me not just now, I have a little bit of a worry that it's going to do that again. <laughs> so if the stream, I'm going to be here till um, live streaming till uh, uh, somewhere between 5.30 and 6 p.m. That's Eastern time. So an hour, uh, an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and so if I disappear, I'm not ending it until then. I'll say when I'm saying goodbye. <laughs> so apologies for that. Um, okay, so what I, I talked about processing community day. And uh, so that's one of the, the that that's one of the Fridays I won't uh, be live online. There's a loud drum beat. You guys can't hear that, can you? Boom, 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 boom. There's like cheering. There's like a film class going on in the room right behind me here. They, they finish at 5:15, so it'll quiet down then. Uh, okay. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. Now, I was talking about the super chat, which I left on by accident because I was experimenting with it, but uh, I, I think I probably will turn that off at some point if I can, because if you're interested in supporting the work that I'm doing and the coding train, again, you should always uh, first consider supporting the Processing Foundation, and you can go to, now I'm hearing feedback, but hopefully that's not me. Um, 
Now, uh, Processing Foundation uh, support. All right, trying again. <laughs> um, and now what I just did is I launched an older version of the Wirecast software. One of these days I'm gonna to switch to Open Broadcast Studio. There's actually a new version of Wirecast 8. Maybe I'll consider getting that. I really do like the Wirecast software. It's worked great for me, but apparently it's not working. It's like it knows that I am like, I crashed. And now it's like, I, I feel your crashed pain and I am also going to, in solidarity, crash over and over again. Get my nerve compressed and open up my, anyway. <clears throat> so, um, so if you are interested, uh, so I, I was saying, um, please consider supporting the Processing Foundation uh, by being a Processing Foundation member. Um, and if you also feel so inclined, uh, you can support uh, what I'm doing here via Patreon, patreon.com slash the coding train. There's a reason why I was mentioning that. Super chat, something like that. Okay, another thing I would like to mention. I teach uh, at a program called uh, ITP. This is the ITP website. ITP is a two-year graduate program here at Tisch School of the Arts, New York University in New York City. Guess what? Apparently, starting in fall ah, 2018, that's like next year, the undergraduate BFA version of ITP called Interactive Media Arts, IMA, because we like, is that an acronym, acronyms, will be accepting its inaugural class. So I will be participating in this. Uh, I don't know, uh, there's a, a lot of information I could attempt to give you, but um, mostly what I want to say is that if you are interested, uh, you should go to itp.nyu.edu slash IMA. I know we have a lot of younger uh, viewers here who are maybe in high school even and might be looking for it. And here is a place where you can find out information about applying. And there's going to be a Facebook open house on Monday. How do I find that? I don't, uh, let's see, about, apply. I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna find out information about that. And whenever this video becomes published and archived later, I will uh, put a link to how you can find the Facebook Live. I'm, I'm assuming it's just at like Facebook slash ITP underscore IMA or IMA underscore NYU or something. Uh, this is a terrible idea for me to try to like Google. Ah, look at that. And now the camera went off. <laughs> See, everything is just run just as poorly as it used to be. I'll find that. I'll find that link later. Somebody can find the um, Facebook live stream. Okay. People are being very impatient that I'm not coding. Have you, have you ever watched the coding train before? Emphasis on the train. <laughs> not so much on the coding. <laughs> I guess I don't know what's in the train. So I will get to coding. Uh, I definitely will. It's, oh, this iPad is not charging. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> everything's working. Uh, okay, so what should we do about coding today? I think those were the main things that I wanted to talk about that don't have to do with coding. So let's talk about what, I'm a little bit out of sorts. I'm gonna get my water. It's always important on the coding train <laughs> to do your physical therapy wrist exercises, elbow exercises. Um, and, oh, thank you, Dominic Forster in the chat just posted ITP's Facebook page. Um, and there's actually some uh, open houses in person if you're in the New York area that you can come and visit too. Okay. So I was, if you recall, last time I was here, you know, the universe really does not want me to try to talk about, I'm afraid to say it. Can I say just like machine learning? First of all, do you think this shirt is a problem? Like, am I going to cause YouTube compression issues with just with this shirt? Um, I think, the, you know, the first time I mentioned machine learning on this channel, the fire alarm went off and I had to evacuate the building. Uh, and the second time uh, I mentioned machine learning, uh, or oh, no, not the second time, but once I got like a few machine learning videos, I started on that, I had this like bike accident and broke my elbow and then I had to take two months off. So I'm a little bit, 
I'm not so sure. I'm at least maybe gonna wait until next week. So I, um, if I go to my channel, um, let me turn hopefully this off. That's not gonna. Um, and I look here at like kind of recent uploads. You'll see this is where this is what I was doing most recently. There's some nonsense. Uh, extra like videos about the bike accident or whatever. But um, I did an introduction to neural networks. I started talking about, uh, about uh, perceptrons um, and multi-layer perceptrons. Started to do a little bit of matrix math. And my goal is to build github.com slash Schiffman neural network P5 a little toy does this work? I, a lot of this stuff was broken last time I checked. Eh, this is kind of working. Maybe it's working. Um, yeah, so a little toy, and I'm gonna change this. We gotta use that, what's the, there's all these new MNIST replacements like fashion or cartoon characters. So I gotta get one of those. So, um, so uh, a little toy neural network to, um, to learn how the bits and pieces of neural networks work what is, what is all the terminology? What are they for? How do they work? How do you code one from scratch? I, I feel like that's an interesting and enjoyable experience for me and possibly for you, the viewer, and I'm going to continue that. And we'll have a little library and people can build things from it. And a lot of what I want to use it for is actually to combine the neural network stuff with genetic algorithms and evolve uh, agents that can play little simple games or perform certain tasks. So that's a goal that's going to happen, <laughs> barring any other thing that I can't anticipate. That's, gonna, that's something I'm really gonna focus on uh, this fall, September, October, November, December. Um, I also wanna spend some time, there is, I wanna mention, uh, there's a new project called deeplearn.js. And I kinda wanna just find it on GitHub, um, which is a project from a, a Google research group. I, um, um, and so I want to use deeplearn.js and combine that with P5 to make some more sophisticated examples and demonstrations where I don't have, where, you know, that I can rely on a lower level library to handle all of the guts of the machine learning for me and I can just make applications. So, um, okay, am I live streaming? All right, I don't remember what the last thing I said was, but apparently I really got to stop talking about Machine learning. Uh, yeah, I think I took too. I restarted the computer, hoping, hoping, hoping that would help. And I'm a little bit paranoid that that's now going to have caused. It it's now, thinks now this is a new live stream. I'm going to have two separate video archives. And poor uh, Mathieu, who helps me with doing editing and managing the channel, is going to have to try to fix that. I need like a code word. It's not machine learning, it's unicorn kittens. I don't know, <laughs> that's, not, that's not any good. Um, so I was saying that uh, the low level stuff running. Yeah, so I was saying that I don't have the smarts or the time to develop something as, as sophisticated as deeplearn.js. So, um, you know, I do have some examples that I've done with TensorFlow and Python that I might do as well, but this is where I'm, this is the trajectory I'm going on. I gotta get off this topic. Okay, here's the other announcement for this fall. Oh, this camera's off. I'm going to start. Am I here? Ah, I am going to start using something. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> called, I cannot reach as high, but I can reach up there. E, I can write on the board, it's very exciting. ES6. What is ES6, you might be wondering? Well, ES6, I, almost went, I was about to say, is the new version of JavaScript, but it's kind of absurd because ES6 actually is a shorthand for, is it E, C, M, a script 2015. And as I did the math earlier, I worked this out. I spent a lot of time all day trying to figure this out. That is from two years ago. <laughs> it's 
very hard to like get back into the get back into the moment. Okay, so ES6. ECMA script 2050. Let's find out what ECMA stands for. Somebody I'm sure knows this. Um, and I know you aren't seeing me right now. ECMA. Uh, it stands for, somebody tell me what it stands for. ECMA International. European Computer Manufacturers Association. <laughs> it's a standards organization. So this is what I was talking about like two hours ago. If you're watching this in the archive, there's probably a jump cut where I couldn't get anything to work for like two hours, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and now what I was talking about was how this fall I want to start using the new, which is not so new because it's from 2013. And now I remember the last thing I was saying was how it takes a while for a lot of these new specifications to be adopted because a lot of browsers don't support them immediately. But it's time, and then uh, programmers, what they have to do is if you're using syntax from ES6 and you're expecting people to use your website from an older browser, you need to run something, I think it's called like Babel, which is something special that you can have there in the background to translate your ES6 syntax into the older, more compatible syntax. And then everyone just feels really sad and wants to lay down and take a nap. We are not going to lay down and take a nap. No, we are not going to lay down and take a nap. We are going to fight through this, but I'm going to use ES6 syntax and I'm going to say, I don't know, just use Chrome, Firefox, a recent browser. Let's go look up what it's supported by. Let's just see if we can find that. I'm sure there's a nice chart or something. Um, Uh, oops, browser support. Simon is writing in the chat that const and let are popular. And I have to say, Simon, I think you are up past your bedtime. <laughs> it's supposed to be very late wherever you are right now. Um, so this is like showing uh, everything uh, where uh, is compiled. Ooh, I don't want to look at this. So, um, <laughs> Desktop browser comp compatibility tables for ES6. So I'll let you um, I'll let you look into that more on your own. The point of what I'm saying here is that I don't really want to worry about that. What I want to do is start using some of the features that I find useful. And the two main features that I'm going to start with. Oops, just lost the microphone. Apologies for that. The two main features I'm going to start with are let which is a new way of declaring a variable, very similar to how one might declare a variable with the keyword var. I'm gonna start, that's gonna be really exciting. I'm gonna say, this is, I'm gonna make an entire video tutorial about let in ES6. Okay, hold on. Start this, we're gonna edit this into a video tutorial. Welcome to a video about ES6 and let. Instead of typing var, type let. Ta-da, finished. That's the end of the video. Okay, I don't know if we really will edit that and publish that as its own thing, but uh, I'm tempted to. So uh, there's more to say about that than that, but I'm going to talk about that at some point. And then I'm going to talk about the class, what it means to write a class in ES6. This is gonna be so exciting because it's going to help us through the pain of the constructor function. This is me talking and doing physical therapy at the same time. <laughs> um, it's going to help us through the pain of all that constructor function stuff and it's going to make doing object-oriented programming in JavaScript hopefully a little nicer syntax-wise. So uh, let solves a particular problem which I will dig into the details about. Um, and then there's also something called const. Eh, you know, which yeah, maybe I'll use it someday. Not right now. Okay, so that's what I'm going to come to. So what should I do? What, what do we have time for today? By the way, somebody in the chat just wrote, anyone else from Hungary? And I'm like, <laughs> ate lunch, an early lunch. It was kind of a small lunch. It was just a little egg salad and a yogurt. <laughs> Very hungry. And I read that from, anyone else hungry? And I'm like, I'm hungry. 
There was once somebody ordered a, uh, I don't really eat, I'm not, like tomatoes is a little, little rough on my throat and acid, so don't, don't do this, but somebody once ordered a pizza while I was streaming live, sent it to me, it was very, very funny, and I gave it to the students here. Oh, arrow functions. K. Weekman asks about arrow functions. So I will also, this fall, talk about arrow functions. I have something to admit. I don't understand this at all. I've read some articles, a couple people explained it to me. I will look, work through it and hopefully help. It will make sense to me, maybe it'll make sense to you. You will help me, I'll help you. I don't know how this is gonna happen, but this is a big question mark for me. Uh, I know that Fun Fun Function, which is a great uh, YouTube channel, has a bunch of videos about ES6 features. <laughs> I will just watch those videos and then like, no, I mean, that's actually not, I mean, I, I will watch those videos, but I won't just read like write down the script and then say it again in my own voice. That wouldn't be pointless. But uh, I will say it again in my own style with my own thoughts and if you really want to know the correct information, you should watch Fun Fun Function. <laughs> All right, that's ES6. Let's do a coding challenge. Uh, and by the way, Austin Fish in the chat is writing, arrow functions are essentially one line functions where the body of the function is implicitly returned. <laughs> there you go, that makes sense to you. Uh, all right, and Simon says that arrow functions are popular also. Okay, so um, I'm starting to reach my limit of what I can manage to do. I don't know if I should bother to get the music working because um, the music right now is not working. I could, I could play the music, but it's gonna be very, very loud. I'm a little afraid to do that to your ears, but I could do this. Oh, I can't even hear it though. Is that really loud? Oops. No, maybe it's not that loud. Okay, tell me if those sound effects were like really uh, of way too loud or if um, this is too loud. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. Nick, Nick is this, saying this do a coding challenge. Dot, this That's dot, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this okay, dot, so what I wanna see is in the YouTube chat, in the Slack chat, um, the post can't adjust the volume levels in post. They're not being recorded separately. I want um, everyone to throw out some coding challenge ideas. We'll either, I'll either do a spin the wheel or a straw poll. I guess I could do the straw poll. Uh, coding challenge. So what I actually, uh, I'm gonna, what I wanted, so okay, this is what I wanna do. I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. So I'm teaching again this course called Programming from A to Z. I've renamed the YouTube playlist, for, or, uh, thanks to uh, Matt's uh, suggestion, uh, Programming with Text, because Programming from A to Z sounds like, oh, this is a beginner level course. This course is actually a quite advanced course. I will <laughs> this semester get to, where is that sound effect? Where? <laughs> Chrome extensions, it's going to happen. Chrome extensions. Um, but it's the only thing that I have, all of, mostly I have video tutorials for all of these topics. I'm gonna to add things like word to vec I'm gonna do word to vec I'm gonna do something about uh, recurrent neural networks and generating text. So I also am gonna add a bunch of tutorials about things that I haven't done. Ah, making an Alexa skill. So there's a bunch of things that I'm adding to the course. If you wanna start from the beginning, there's a playlist and things will get added. <laughs> and Kay Weekman suggests a quaternion Chrome extension. Um, yeah, Chrome extensions, are, okay, so, but what I want to do is, um, in this first week, one of the things that I talk about is creating, I'm scrolling like a crazy person here, uh, the homework assignment for the first week for my course, which is started here at NYU, is to make a text mashup machine. And you can make up your own, what is, how can you make an algorithm to retrieve, to take text from a source, something somebody typed in, a text file that's loaded, a Twitter feed, something like that, and create new text out of that. That could be poetry, that could be experimental in any number of ways. So some examples of this historically are um, cut up machines from the beat uh, artist, writer, uh, William Burroughs, um, erasure poetry, which I think is from the French uh, writing collective Ulipo, if I'm saying that correctly. 
the n plus 7 technique is one of my favorite things. Uh, let's look at this page. I just don't know the historical origins of n plus 7. So what n plus 7 does, oh, it's also from Ulipo. So the idea of n plus 7, and the writer takes a poem already in existence and substitutes each of the poem's substantive nouns with the noun appearing seven nouns away in the dictionary. So, um, so this is like the n plus 7 rule to Wallace Stevens' poem, The Snowman. One must have a miniature of wisdom to regard the fruit and the boulders of the pinions crusted with soap. Um, so that's one thing. And then uh, the diastic technique, which I've talked about in a video and I made a whole video about. So uh, there's also something called the flesh index, which is something that I talk about in this course and has a little tutorial here about readability score, the flesh index being a readability score. What is the reading level? Is this a kind of children's book? Is it a uh, kind of newspaper article? Is it like a PhD thesis? <laughs> What's the reading level? And, and you can kind of intuitively think like, well, maybe articles that have longer sentences with words with more, with more syllables, those are um, higher reading level uh, versus uh, something like with short sentences with one or two syllable words, that's a lower reading level, lower flesh index score. So, here are some options. Uh, an erasure, I talked about, I didn't actually say what that was, but an erasure is a kind of, and this actually, this is really useful uh, for learning about DOM manipulation, because if you have a, I think I have some videos that do stuff like this, but if you have a bo big body of text, a challenge is how can you treat each word separately through JavaScript? So like, even though it looks like to the reader, like it's one paragraph tag, each character or each word is a separate span perhaps, so that you can modify its color or its behavior. So erasure, n plus seven, oops, n plus seven. I have no idea how I would do that. I would need some kind of machine readable dictionary. I could use like WordNick or WordNet. Erasure, yes. It's time to discover a little something to make life. Is that? <coughs> me, 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 me. By the way, after that whole sore throat, I, I, I seem to have lots of like, let me not go through the sore throat fiasco from last year. I'm going to knock on wood. No more medical issues. Okay, n plus 7. Erasure n plus 7. Uh, what was the other one? I have no memory anymore. Did I just lose this page? Well, I, a flesh index. There was another one. Erasure n plus 7. Diastic. Oh, cut-ups. I could do a William Burroughs cut-ups. That's probably like a, not one of the less interesting ones. Um, let me see if there's any other... Uh, people wanted me to do games, Angry Birds. Um, so, uh, in the, and I'm, um, yeah, I'm going to do something with text today. That's what's going to happen. Although, honestly, maybe the game would be simpler. So let's do one of these. Erasure n plus 7 flesh cut-ups. Um, so uh, I'm going to say create poll. I'm going to do all these in JavaScript as a web page. And here is the straw poll. Uh, the straw poll um, you, URL. ZWBFFCSP, if somebody who has privileges can post this in the chat. Uh, I will play you some music. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, song. This dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song, this dot. Apparently, this is not crashing anymore. So I think it was my Wirecast file that was corrupted. I wish I had realized that earlier. Today would be much less of a disaster. All right, how do we feel? This is like enough time. Oh, acrostic poem. What is that? Somebody remind me. I know what this is. An acrostic poem is a type of poetry where the first, last, or other letters in a line spell out a particular word or phrase, like resist, perhaps. The most common and simple form of an acrostic poem is where the first letters of each line spell out a word or phrase. That would, this would be an interesting thing to program for sure. It's not on my straw poll, though. Whoops. Um, let's view the results. People are really interested in the erasure, which is good. Um, let me just show you what the, because uh, I've, I've, I've made an example. I mean, obviously, I would have to build it. 
Um, so I'm going to go to the example just so you can see it because it does present an interesting challenge. Um, and I'm going to go find my examples. Uh, here's the erasure poetry machine. So, um, hit submit. so this is what it does. What it does is you can see here, I can hover over any word and highlight it. And you have to excuse my poor graphic design abilities. And I can click on it to erase it. So I can do an erasure. Now, obviously, I could pick and like erase a whole bunch of things randomly. I could have a slider that's what percentage of things to erase. But this is kind of interesting. How do you handle these interactions? Now, it's not actually erased. I just changed the color to white so it doesn't actually show up. But interestingly enough, keep spacing. I could erase things and actually not keep that, keep them there. So that's a kind of interesting, so this would be something that's interesting to, to try and would demonstrate certainly a bunch of DOM manipulation techniques. So I'm happy to try this now. If you're not so interested, go back and vote for something else. Refresh results. N plus seven has taken the lead. Whoa. Do we need a runoff? People are not interested in the flesh or cutoffs. The acrostic was an interesting idea. So let's, Let's, um, I, I have a procrastination problem and it's like six o'clock when I said I was going to leave, but I'm going to do a coding challenge today. <laughs> My wrist and arm hurts. <laughs> I'm not sorry, I'm not looking for sympathy. It's just like an involuntary uh, reaction. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're going to do a runoff. I'm going to hit refresh one more time. We're going to add acrostic. N plus seven is really winning. Uh, we are going to make a new straw poll. And I'm going to say runoff. I'm going to say n plus 7, uh, erasure, right? Those were the two for the runoff, and now an acrostic. And again, an acrostic is, um, I showed it already, so hopefully you know. <laughs> Create the bowl. And the reason why I like the acrostic is I actually don't have an example that does that. So I think that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, WY42ZAD3. This is the URL, strawpoll.com. I'm going to give this the amount of time it takes As to play always, the this, I dot always forget the this dot song. This dot song is this one dot, minute and eight seconds. I'm going to do this dot. So you have this one dot, minute and eight this, seconds. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm going to do this dot. Do this straw poll. I'm going to do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. We're going to go with whatever it is. You say do the spinning wheel. The whole thing is not fun because. This dot song. This dot. This dot. This dot. Never forget this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. Anybody actually stays at the end of this live stream, I can trade my scar. This dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this. Twenty-six seconds left. We are waiting. Should we see? Should we look in the middle if you haven't voted yet? Are you curious? Is it going to change? Acrostic is winning by quite a bit. That's interesting. We've got 10 seconds left. 10 seconds to vote. This dot. Never forget this dot. I'm going to do the this dot. This dot. This dot. You know what I love about the acrostic? Never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. Okay, we're going to. I'm going to refresh the results in five, four, three, two, one. And Acrostic is the winner. Acrostic. We are going to program a coding challenge with an acrostic. And here's what I love about this. What I want the acrostic, and let me, uh, let's go back to here. What I like about this, oh, oh, interesting. I think I'm going to do it with the first letter. So this is interesting that you could do it with a letter in the middle. But to keep things simple, I'm going to do it with the first letter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the user to enter in a text input a word, and then the poem will generate with that word. Now here's the thing. How do I get it to sound like language or sentences? Like, do I just, I think actually, hmm, what's an API? I think the WordNIC API, let's look at WordNIC for a second. So I feel like using the WordNIC API would be perfect for this. Um, so let's go look at that for a second. Um, because I think it gives me more than, so um, what I want to do is, um, boy, I have, an, I have an API key already, so I can find that somewhere in my stuff. Um, but where is that docs? I guess I'm looking for. Um, 
if I look up a word, uh, how do I ask um, search? So search is what I probably want to give me words that start with a certain letter. By the way, I would love to take um, uh, Lank in the chat is saying, please allow more time for the voting as we can't copy paste the URL in order to vote. Okay, I will do that next time. I apologize for that. I'm kind of just being a goofball about this stuff. I hope nobody was like really put out by the voting. Uh, I will check it again. <laughs> it's, it's still the same result. But um, so I really like the WordNick API. Someone is saying use the dictionary API. What I need are some suggestions, in particular if you're a patron and in the Slack channel, that would be great, of how, uh, how to search for a particular word uh, that starts with a certain letter. So query is like, what if I just do query A and do uh, try it out? So, yeah, now I get words that start with the letter A. So I can definitely use the words search in WordNick, and I can do things like, um, I can do things like, um, oh, but I can have it use it in a sentence. I can have it use, I can use the use it in a sentence and then position it for the acrostic so that that letter is highlighted maybe. But I could do things like, um, you know, it at least has to be like a five letter word. Like I'm changing the minimum length now. Uh, and so now if I try it again, I'm only getting five letter words. I could do things like um, maximum corpus count. Like I could use words that aren't used that frequently. So what if I said um, 50 between one, it appears only one time and 50 times. I think that would probably be and try it out. Now I'm going to get words like, Apparelling, I don't even, aponeurotic, abhorrency. So this is expert. So this is kind of interesting. So I can definitely use, um, I should, so I will bold the first. I can definitely use this um, to get some interesting words. The question, so maybe what I'm going to start with actually, and, and I'll leave this as an exercise, I'm going to do a simple coding challenge. The simple coding challenge, unless somebody has a better idea, WhoopIP is uh, uh, in the chat. I meant to say this actually earlier. The first, this is the first thing that I meant to say that I don't know if we have any viewers in Florida or in the Caribbean that are, are even in Houston. I just, you know, just wanted to say, uh, be safe everybody who's in these paths of these hurricanes. Um, I don't know if any will, any will come up and hit this far up. I'm in New York on the East Coast, but um, okay. I definitely can search by part of speech. So I could do something like noun, verb, noun, or something like that, but I think what I'm going to do to simplify things is I'm going to make an acrostic, which is just a list of words, bolding the first letter. So the poem is just going to be some strange words. And then I think as an exercise for people watching the video, the thing that they could expand on this would be to, um, to expand on this could be to like actually make the, it more poem-like. Think of a creative way to make it actually be lines of poetry, the spacing of the poetry, what other, what else. Uh, whatever link I use, will, sh uh, of course, I will share. Okay, so, um, so here we go. Let's get set up. As always, no. I, as always, I... Okay, so what do I need for this? First, please bear with me because it is now 6 p.m. and I'm going to be late getting home. So I um, would like to just check and make sure I have no emergency messages. Um, and I'm going to send a message. Yeah, Alka, one of our viewers, I know lives in the Houston area, thanks for that message. Great wizard. Um, we've heard that he's doing okay. Uh, a technical... Hold on. <laughs> please, please wait. I'll be right back. Okay. Now. 
Okay, so uh, I'm ready here. So I need to get set up. And what I need is WordNick. The WordNick website. I need this acrostic poem. And I wonder if just the Wikipedia page would be the good. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to add the Wikipedia page. Um, and refresh these results. I'm going to close out my YouTube channel. I am going to oops, make a directory. Too loud, sorry. Too quiet. Better? Um, I am going to uh, go to the finder here. I'm going to I don't know, let's find a P5.js example. This will work. I should really use that P5 manager tool. It's a node tool. It's really awesome. I'm going to use that. Somebody remind me next time. And I'm going to reach, change this to be called acrostic. And then I'm going to open up Atom. Still quieter? People want the music quieter? Uh, okay, whoops. And I'm going to open the acrostic. Am I too loud? Uh, okay, so we don't need any of this. put in here, oops, I'm going to put in the title acrostic, Whew. and then I'm going to go to the desktop, <laughs> go to acrostic, run a server, and get coding. So guess what? Nothing has changed here on the coding train. In today's episode of the coding train, I spent two hours rambling, then having technical difficulty, and didn't actually code until two hours into the live stream. I should not do that. Okay. Um, let's open up the console. Um, vehicle is not defined. Let's get rid of this. Uh, it's got P5. Okay, so let's look at, I need to get the most recent P5.js. Which is, woo, what a nice new version. 0.5.4, let's update our P5.js here. So this is the DOM library, which I also need. Now what I need is also P5.js. I don't think I'm gonna use any sound. So let me add that as well. This, this stuff will not go into the coding challenge. This is just pre-getting ready stuff. Whoop, ah, shoot, it was so close. I hit copy instead of paste by accident. There we go. Okay, we are just about ready. <laughs> Neural networks, please. Okay. All right. Function setup console.log acrostic. Let's just see that things are working. Things are working. And I lost those. Oh. Uh, let me open up this. We are so ready for this. We are so ready for this. Who's ready for this? You're ready for this. Okay. 
my stomach is now devouring itself. I think, though, all this moving around is probably good for my elbow. Okay. Hey, Yining, is this the Yining who um, is going to be appearing in a guest video soon who's actually watching this? I'm sorry that I haven't gotten back to you. I just have been behind on everything, but it's my intention to... I'm trying to scroll back into the chat. But hi, Yining, if you're the Yining that will be appearing in a guest video soon. <laughs> okay, everyone wants me to get started. Let's, um, let me press the button on the camera. Let me... Um, do you think, do, what's the chance that I'm going to need the whiteboard during this coding challenge? And I can't even find an eraser. So even if I, I guess I could use this tissue. Oh, oh no, here's my eraser. Nope, that's not the eraser. Uh, you can't see me here, but I'm going to, oh. <laughs> These cameras like changed how they, how they worked. Um, one thing that I can't really do is erase. Because my arm is so weak still from the accident and all the time being in the cast and the splint and the healing, I can't, um, like with this hand, oh, I, could, I could do it with my left hand. <laughs> There's a solution. I can't like put pressure and this tissue like does not really erase this stuff. Um, I can't really um, put pressure on uh, a surface pushed down this is very silly what I'm doing here, wasting this time trying to erase this whiteboard. But I'm doing it nonetheless. Okay. Good enough. All right. Here we go. You know, I kind of want to have like a big moment because I haven't done a coding challenge in like two months. But, boy, this is like, my, my fan is worrying like crazy. Um, but there's really no point in me doing that because someday all these videos will just exist in the library as if there was never any time involved at all. Um, and here we go. Ada is here in the chat. Welcome, Ada, who used to live apparently in a different state compared to where she lives right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, here we go. Um, by the way, I don't know if anybody is a moderator. There's a new thing. Oh, good. Somebody's already fixing that. Somebody's already doing that. I have a new like protection in the chat against. I turned on a YouTube like chat auto chat moderation. Okay. Stop it. Stop. 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 Do the coding challenge. I know what you want me to do. You really want me just to read some random digits, don't you? You haven't waited two and a half hours for me to actually code something just to have you read some random digits, have you? Eight thousand, eight hundred and seven, thirty-three thousand, four hundred and sixty-four, ninety-eight thousand, two hundred and fifty-nine, thirty-six thousand, one hundred seventeen, eighty-five thousand, five hundred fifty-six, fifty-three thousand, seven. Okay. <laughs> I love torturing you. I just really, really do. <laughs> That was, the, that was like one of the greatest moments of my life just right now because I know how much nobody wanted me to do that. <clears throat> Hello! Welcome to another coding challenge. This is a coding challenge that's part of my programming with text stuff. And I'm going to attempt to do something that I actually didn't, I, I knew about this before, but I'd forgotten about it. And someone in the chat during one of my live streams mentioned it. So I'm going to attempt in this video to program what's called An acrostic. I wanted to kind of like time that with the Zoom thing, but that didn't really work. So what is an acrostic? An acrostic is a poem or other form of writing in which the first letter or syllable, interesting enough, of each line spells out a word, message, or the alphabet. So what I want to do, and I'm going to just come over to the whiteboard to explain this, is like if we have a certain word like mango, I can't believe I didn't use rainbow or blueberry. Blueberry, rainbow, or unicorn, but um, then I want to have a poem where the first sentence is like, My beautiful flower always smells nice and 
Oh, la 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 la. There we go. That's my poem that starts, man. I have no ability to be creative and think with words. It's just not with me. But you will do something better. And plus, we're going to ask the computer to do this anyway. So now, I think there's a lot of interesting questions about this. What I want to do is create a web page that has a text input box so the user could type in a word and then get the acrostic coming down. Now an acrostic can be a lot of things. It can, we can work with syllables. The, the, the actual like letter could appear in the middle of each sentence. It could be highlighted. There's so many stylish, interesting things you can do. But I'm going to try to do something really simple. I'm just going to create a little poem that has one word per line and each word starts with that letter. Now it's not, it seems like it's not a lot, but I think we're going to get some good JavaScript, HTML, DOM manipulation stuff. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll use the WordNick API to find words that start with a certain letter. And then you, after watching this video, can improve on this and make a more creative version that does something more stylistic, visual, animates, or actually has, think about ways that you might use, oh, I could have done something like a Markov chain. I have these Markov chain videos to like generate the text that starts with a given letter. Some kind of, oh, there's a word I'm not allowed to say anymore because it makes everything crash. It rhymes with machine. Ferning, but I can't say it. It's the topic that shall not be named. But you could use that to like some kind of, it rhymes with McCurrent, Lural, Wet Work. Anyway, on to the coding. <laughs> I took too much time. Code already, so it says in the chat. It is time now to code. And so here's a Wikipedia page for an acrostic. We can see one that uh, is here from 1850. Uh, and you can read more about it, and I'm in the wrong place. Let's redo that. <laughs> Edit point for Mathieu. Thank you, Mathieu. Let's get to coding. Being told to code. So uh, you can read more about acrostics here, obviously, on the Wikipedia page. You can see a nice example here. And I already have open the WordNIC uh, developer API because I thought a little while ago that I was going to use this. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do, and I've got some code here. Uh, there's nothing in this. What I want to do is first at least add I'm gonna, uh, acrostic, a header in the HTML page. Then I want to make a little paragraph. And I want to make, uh, what do you call this thing? Input? <laughs> uh, word. Will this do it? I, I, I can't even remember. I, I haven't coded in so long, I don't even remember what the stuff is. But hopefully this is going to be right. Uh, let's look at our web page now. There we go. So the idea here is that I type in a word like mango or unicorn. Ooh, it would be cool actually if it's constantly generating the acrostic as you're typing. So it's like actually generating it with each letter, each letter you delete. But let's not do that on the fly. Let's have a submit button. And let's add a uh, button and say submit button. So now we have the submit button. The idea here is that I'm going to say uh, unicorn. And I'm going to hit submit. And I'm going to see my acrostic here. It's very hard for you to see this tiny, 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 tiny stuff. But now you can see that it's bigger. OK, so we've got the web page. And of course, you, as the viewer of this video, can make a much more beautiful and interesting interactive web page that gets the word in a different way. But this is where I'll start. Next, what I need to do is, uh, oh, you know what would be interesting? We could use, well, we're not going to use Canvas. I'm using the P5JS library, as I often do, but I'm not going to use Canvas. So I'm going to say, it's for any kind of like drawing or animation, but you might want to. I'm going to say, no, Canvas. <laughs> no Canvas. No. It's like, oh, that's a very, not very nice. I like to say yes. Whenever possible, I like to say yes. If you can say yes, say yes. What is this crazy, do you guys see what's going on here? The like, there's some kind of like ghost in the machine. Like that's really weird. What is going on? Okay, I'm just gonna live with that. I'm gonna live with the weird flickering. Maybe somebody can tell me what it is. Another. Oh whoa 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 whoa! I can't live with it anymore. To time out. What is going on? I'm gonna quit, Adam. This is. Uh, I guess we're gonna edit this out. I guess. That's why, um, and I might, I'll just move to Sublime. People are telling me to use uh, Visual Studio. I don't know. I, I just haven't used it before, but everyone says they love it. Um, let's open this back up. In, uh, oh, Adam's not open. Well, I'm just going to give it a quick try, and if Adam breaks, it should actually reopen it. 
Oh, wow. It, like, deleted what I had. What did I have? This is what I had, right? Okay. Oh, it's doing it again. What is it doing? Whoa. Is it my, is it my computer and keyboard? Is it Adam? Let's not use Adam. Let's switch over to Sublime. Once again, nothing there. Uh, what did I have? No canvas? Oh, it's not doing my auto. Well, it's fine. I'm going to have to live with this. How's this font size? Okay. You know, I like, whenever possible, I like to use something that's open source and free. And Sublime is, uh, you can use it for free. It's, I, I do, I actually have purchased a license to Sublime. I can't remember if I purchased it or I have a license that's purchased from NYU. I think I purchased one like a long time ago. But um, I probably don't have it on this computer. So it's probably going to, uh, they're going to like yell at me and say I need to pay for it. Visual Studio Code is also open source, uh, says Nick Nick. Okay. All right, uh, edit point over. I'm back and using sublime text because there was a monster in my computer, a little mouse or something running around and doing something with Adam. So I'll come back to Adam another time, but we've got to get this code written. So I'm going to go back here and run this and we can see things are still going. <laughs> it's hard for me to scratch my ear, but I'm doing it. Okay, so now, what, what do I need to do? So the first thing I need to do is I need to get whatever the user enters. So I need to have uh, access to when the user hits the button, and then I need to have access to what's in the text input when the user hits the button. I'm gonna do something a little bit weird. This is gonna be weird. Oh, wait, it didn't, it didn't syntax highlight that for me? No, no, I can't go on. <laughs> <laughs> my iPad battery died. It's not going to syntax highlight for me the new ES6 feature I'm going to use. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot do it. People are, people are saying all sorts of things. Um, okay, so uh, <laughs> my phone is ringing. <laughs> People like Visual Studio. Look, oh, there's like totally a ghost in the computer here. Okay, hold on. Uh -huh. What? Serenity now, indeed. Serenity now. It's also getting really hot in here. <laughs> uh, Visual Studio, should we go for it? Download Visual Studio for Mac. What do I want? I just want community, right? Oh, wait. No, no, no. This looks too fancy for me. Rich IDE, advanced. I don't want that. Search versus code. Code. Visual Studio code. Thank you. So this is what I want. Let's try this. Liking it so far. Ooh, it looks pretty. Open. Desktop, acrostic. I want to get rid of the welcome. Sketch.js, whoa, that is tiny. 
Oh, no. How can I increase... Well, that's making it bigger, but I don't want this really to be bigger. How do I increase the font size here? Um, editor font size. Here we go. 24. Let's try that. Oh. Do I need to... Oh, edit. No. Do I need to put it in here? Oh, yeah. Editor font size. Yeah, a little, little, little extra... 24. This needs a comma probably. There we go. And then let's change the zoom level to 1. And then, so this looks good. Um, that looks kind of small. So let's go to uh, 48. Let's double it. Way too big. Apparently, I don't have any intuition for font sizes. How's that? Still a little big? 32? Oh, that is 32. 28? Okay, this good? Well, now it looks kind of small. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yay! <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I'm ready now, and ooh. what's it doing here? Does it like know something? Why is my browser going crazy? Okay, there we go. All right. <sighs> <laughs> is anybody actually still here? <laughs> oh my god. This is... Um, how does everyone... Okay, so... Can I just get a, uh, a quick reality check on this font size? How does the font size look? A little bit bigger? I kind of want to make it a little bigger. Please, especially in the patron group, in the Slack channel, if you could let me know. You had the icon in the top left clicked. Okay, okay. <laughs> fine. Font is fine. Fine, fine. Everyone says fine. Okay. Okay. So Adam was going crazy. I am now trying for the first time ever Visual Studio Code, which is an open source code editor, I think, uh, by, from Microsoft. Anyway, you can look that up on your own. I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to hit, and things are still working. So what do I need to do? I first need to get access to when a user clicks the button, and when they click the button, what word they've typed in. Okay, so what is that? Uh, okay, I'm going to do something really crazy for the first time ever on my YouTube channel. Let button equals select submit. So there's a couple things. Now, I made a, a video tutorial about this new keyword in JavaScript the ES6 version of JavaScript called let. I'll summarize it for you. Instead of var, type let. Now, I'll get, I'm going to make another video, which I will put a link to in the description of this video when I make it, to talk about what is let and why might you use it instead of var. But right now, let is var. Var is let, var is let, let is var. Var is let, let is var. Okay, but what I'm doing is I want to se select that submit button. Now, this is a hash or pound submit means I need that submit button to actually have an ID. Submit, and I want the input to have an ID. I'll call that word. Let me just call it a word input. And I'm going to call this submit button just to be overly verbose. So now I'm going to select submit button, and I'm going to say let uh, input equal select. Oh my God, there's so much autocomplete going on in this text editor. <laughs> Word input. I might have to turn that off at some point, but okay. So now I have my two elements that are on the HTML page that I can start to get information from. For example, when I press the button on the mouse, I want to make an acrostic. So I'm going to write a function, make, acrost make, make acrostic. 
So this here, in case you're wondering, when I, this is P5JS syntax, uh, function in P5JS. When I press the mouse on the button, call the function make acrostic, here's the function make acrostic. The first thing I just want to do is say let word equals word input dot value. There we go. So I am getting whatever somebody typed in, and I'm going to console.log word. Now I'm going to hit refresh, and here we go. Oh, my sound effect board died. That's fine. Rainbow. Submit. Oh, word input dot value is not a function. Hmm. So what did I get wrong? Select word. Ah, I called my variable input, and the ID was word input. So that's just supposed to be input. There's a mistake that I made. Good for me. <laughs> I'm going to type in rainbow again, hit submit, and there we go. And now one thing I'm going to do to make development a little bit easier is I'm just going to, in the HTML, I'm going to say a value equals rainbow. So that way when I load the page up, it actually just uh, fills in rainbow for me. And I'm going to do something else. When I load the page up, I'm actually just going to call the function make acrostic. So I don't even have to, my arms are still sore. That's a long story. There are probably other videos about that. But that's why I don't have to press the button every time I load the page. I could just hit refresh and it's running that acrostic function. So now we're set up, but now comes the actual harder part. What I need to do is look at the each letter one at a time and start a new line of a poem with that letter. So how do I iterate over each character of a string? That's not so, uh, that's something I can definitely manage. Of our, oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> Call the emergency ES6 train for let i equals zero. i is less than word.length i plus plus. Now I'm going to say, mm, what should I do? Uh, let's make a, a div for each one, I don't know. Uh, there's lots of different ways I could think about creating each line. I'm going to just do it as a div. Create div word car at, oh, so word, yeah, car at i. So now if I do this, we can see there is, you can sort of, I can move this over here so I'm not standing in front of it. There is the beginning of my acrostic. Rainbow. If I type in mango, or mango, Mango. So really all I've done so far is have a text input field, a button, <laughs> and I could then look at each letter one at a time and put them on a separate line because each one is a separate div. Okay, now I'm going to have to be a little bit more clever probably about how I organize these lines and all that sort of thing, but now here's what I want to do. Instead of just putting the letter, what I want to do is go and write a line of poetry that starts with that letter. And again, instead of a line of poetry, I'm just going to have one word that starts with that letter. So how do I get a word that starts with that letter? Well, there's any number of ways I could do that. I could try to write some algorithm to make up a word. I could load a text file and sort all the words from that text file in some kind of uh, associative array, dictionary, JavaScript object thing that keeps track of every word by letter. And I've done that in other videos. And that actually would be a good, you should try that. I'm going to use the WordNIC API. WordNIC is a uh, API application programming interface, a thing that your application can interface with via programming. <laughs> That's one way to think about it. Um, that has a lot of information about words. It's like a big dictionary with lots of information about words. And I can, add, if I go to developer.wordnick.com and I go to docs, I can start to look at what are some of the things that I can ask Wordnick. One of the things that I can ask Wordnick is, give me some words. And one of the ways I can ask for some words is by searching. And one of the ways I can search is by search w any words that start with a certain letter. So I'm going to ask for words that start with the letter R. I'm going to, I could say like only nouns, so that things could be interesting there. Um, this is interesting, corpus count. Corpus count is a part of the WordNIC API where it keeps this big corpus of lots of, I think, articles and books and things, I could say, well, how common is the word? Like the would have a really high corpus count. But 
fractional <laughs> would have a lower corpus count. Boy, I really can't think of anything. So I kind of actually want to have rare words. I think it'll be more interesting. So I'm going to say somewhere in the corpus count between 1 and 25. Dictionaries may be a little bit different. I don't have to read the documentation. Uh, and minimum length, let's not get one letter words. Let's at least have a six letter word and uh, no maximum length. And I don't really need to get 10 words. I'll just take whatever is first. And I'm going to now click try it out. And I can see here I got for R reiterant. I don't know why it gave me a first search result with the letter R. Now if I do it again, doesn't seem to be random, actually. So maybe I do actually want, giving it to me in some order, or maybe they're just, so let me ask for 10. And now I can get a bunch. So I think I'm going to ask for a bunch and pick one randomly. Reprovable, Ratlin, Roadbook, Rootage, Red Beaked. These are some great words. And I can also, by the way, start to do all sorts of things like then ask WordNick for a sentence that uses that word, and information about the etymology of that word probably, but I'm going to leave that again. Those are exercises that you could use to further expand on this. So how do I actually get this? Well look, this request URL, and I have a whole set of video tutorials about working with APIs and request URLs and how you do this. And you can go back and review those. I'll link to that in this video's description. But all we need to know for this video is this request URL. So I'm going to grab it. I am going to copy it and I am going to put it in my code. I am going to say let URL equal this. And I think it's wrapping the text. Um, so we're looking at this, but the thing is, I actually don't want it. This is the thing that I want to change. I want to make this same request, but for different letters. So I'm going to do something kind of silly. Let URL 1 equal all the stuff in this URL up to here. And then I'm going to say let URL2 equal all the rest of it. And by the way, I need an API key. So I really should go and sign up for an API key. And I have one. And I might pause this, edit this video in a second to put a working one in there. But when I used WordNick's website, it gave me a temporary API key just so I could like play around and learn how to use it. So I'm going to see if that still works. So this is now the second part of the URL. And so now when I make for each one of these, what I need to do, whoo, oh boy, there's going to be some tricky stuff here. Always tricky stuff. Let's just, let's take a break from this algorithm for a second. And just at the beginning, let's say load JSON. So load JSON is a function that allows me to load some data from an API call, a URL, and I'm going to load the first half of the URL plus the letter R plus the second half of the URL. Because I'm just going to use R now because what I want to do is this needs to eventually become dynamic. Like I need to get different letters. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, uh, okay, let's edit that out perhaps. So then when I load the data from the API, I need to write a callback function to tell me when that's ready. So I'm going to write this function. I'm going to say uh, data, uh, got data. Okay, so now I'm going to say got data. And what I'm going to do with, is I'm going to write a function. I'm going to call it got data. I'm going to get some data and I'm just going to say console log data. So I just want to see now that this works with WordNick. So I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to hit refresh. Oh, I have an error, sketch.js line 2. What's wrong here? Oh, there's like an extra R here for no reason. Okay, look. Total results 2,308. Search results. Here are all the words. R, I don't know why R is one. I guess it always gives you that first. Re-entry, red litten. Great. So I got, uh, and I got 10. There are 2,308 possibilities. So I should probably, um, maybe I shouldn't give it a limit. If I take the limit out, maybe I'll just get all of them and I can pick a random one. There might be a better way to do this. There's probably a way for me to ask for a random one through the, uh, the way I form the query. But let's do this anyway. So now I got 
It still only gave me 10. I wonder if 10 is the maximum, but I'll come back to that later. Maybe somebody in the chat will, will tell me how to do this later. I'm just going to get 10 and pick a random one. Okay, so we know that works. How's the thing? I need to do this. I need to do this, load the JSON for every letter. What is every letter? It is var, oh no, 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 var, let letter equal word dot car at i. Create a div with that letter. Pause. Someone told me to use skip in the URL to skip the first one, the single letter. That's a good idea. And I could also use skip to move to a different point, but I don't know that I'd have to ask for the total first, which is kind of overly complicated. Um, create, okay, I'm back. Then I want to create a div with that letter. And then I want to load the JSON instead of the hard coded R value. I want to load the JSON with the letter. So let's see how this goes. And let's be a little, let's be simpler here. Let's go to index.html and let's have it just do it for bow, B-O-W. Let's just use it, do it for three letters. So look at this, I got results. Now here's the thing, did I get them in the order, B-O-W? This one is O, so I got O first. Then I got W, and I can only assume the last one is B. So here's the thing, this is really key. When working with APIs and making multiple API calls, everything in Java is asynchronous. Meaning you don't, you're, the code is gonna execute at some point later whenever the API has happened to return, and that could happen in any given order, no matter what order you ask for things in. So I could do something where I ask for them Ask for B, and only when I get the results back, then ask for O, and only when I get the results back, then ask for W. That's one option. Another option, which I think I might like better, is to instead keep track of what I'm asking for, and when it comes back, just check what it was, and then use that. So this, I think, is what I'm gonna do. Um, oh, and somebody in the chat is now telling me, by the way, so let's fix this that put the limit back, um, I don't know where, I guess I could put that anywhere. So I'm gonna put it here and make the limit equal to negative one. So if I make the limit equal to negative one, maybe I'll get everything. Let's see. I got, still only got 11. I think it maybe it just maxes out at that. Whatever, <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> maybe I did that wrong. We'll just edit that out of the final video thing since that didn't work. Simon is suggesting that I call it data received. I like shorter names. Got data is a bit of a, I can see how that can be a problem though. Um, oh, look at this. Why did I, what just happened here? Did I hit undo? Weird. Must have hit undo by accident. Maybe I didn't, hold on a sec. Anyway, I'm gonna, 10 seems to be the max. I'm not gonna worry about it. To get rid of the first letter makes skip equal one. All right, actually one thing I should add to this is uh, say skip equals one, because what we know, I noticed here that, and thank you to the chat for helping with this, the word Nick is always returning just the single letters, the first result, which I might actually want to use to know which one came back, but whatever, I'm gonna put skip equal one so that I don't get it right now. Okay, so now, here's the thing. Let's make sure this still works. Okay, I got three results, B-O-W. Now, what I need to do is I want to keep track of this particular div. So if I make this div, let div equals create div, then what I want to do is when this comes back, I want to feed in the got data function, which is up here, and I'm gonna move this down now. I'm gonna move this and just put it here so I can see it more clearly. I want got data to know about this particular div and somehow say like div HTML and then, uh, you know, something. 
So I have to something out of the data. So first, let's get the date got data function to pick a random word. So if I look at the actual data, it's in a property called search results, and it is a and that's an array, and I need to pick a random one. So I'm going to say var options equals data dot search results. Let let this is really going to be a hard habit to break. Then I'm going to say uh, var uh, <laughs> let word equals random options. So something nice that P5 does for you is with the random function, you can pass it an array and it'll just pick a random one out of it. And then console.log word. So now if I hit refresh here, hmm, interesting, I didn't do that. Cr oh, okay. Word, okay, so this picking, that is not an array of words, it's an array of objects. Each object has three properties, one of which is actually the, word, the property of words. So I'm gonna call this a selection, and then, let, and then I'm gonna say console log selection.word. So now when I refresh this, I get three words. Let's get rid of this, it's saying, um, we don't need console.log acrostic, and it's confusing that it's console logging bow. So let's get rid of that. So I, I'm getting W-O-B. I should get three different words each time. Some really interesting, weird words that I've never heard of before. Okay, obligement, wolf tap, barely. Okay, so now we've got our words, but I want those words to know which div to go into so they go in the right order. And then eventually I'm gonna wanna highlight the character and I may need spans, who knows what I'm gonna need, but let's, Let's try this. Okay, how do I do this? <laughs> I I, by the way, I really haven't coded for like two months. This is crazy. Okay. I think what I need is a closure. So what I want to do is I'm going to say pick word and I'm going to say div and then I'm going to pass it the URL. So I'm going to write a separate function called pick word and I'm going to pass that function the div and the URL which sort of lets me pair those two things together and they can always live together so that when the URL gets back, gives back data, it can go with the div. Bear with me. And I have a couple videos about closures and doing this. I'll reference those in this video's description. So now I can take this load, I can basically rename, I can write a new function called pick word. And what does it need? It needs a div. And maybe that shouldn't be a div, it should be like an element. It might not need to be a div later. And it needs a URL. So now I can, what I can do, how do I do, okay, timeout. How do I auto format in uh, Visual Studio? Right, uh, Ride Spirals is making a good point in the chat that just pass the letter in and let the URL work out here. That's a good point. I'm going to make that correction. Does anybody know, um, yeah, I also could look at the first letter of the word that comes back, but does anybody know how I auto format in Visual Studio? Alt Shift F. Maybe I actually, hmm, that's not working. Control Shift F. Do I have to like select it? That did it. Okay. Whatever. All right. Um, a great comment came from the chat, which it probably makes more sense for this pick word function actually to include the letter, to just receive the letter and have this work of the URL formation happen in the pick word function. So I'm going to change that and then I'm going to say let URL equal this and then I'm going to say load JSON from the URL got data. This is what I had before. However, what's new now is that the callback is in, enclosed, is in a closure, is enclosed inside this outer function so that instead of console logging selection.word, I can say div.html. It's that specific div that came into the pick word function, div.html selection.word. So now, here we go. Balneo obscener whimsicalness. Bruckel Uspor's whimsicalness. And I can try doing rainbow. 
Oops, oh, wait a second. Ah, I, oh no, oh, interesting. Oh, I love that. What's kind of fun about that is it was sort of accidental. Let's take out now the thing that does it automatically. So I don't want to like have it do it automatically. Um, and it's kind of interesting to do it with a longer word. So let's go back to my, hold on. I lost my, oh, here we go. Um, let's go back to uh, uh, putting in rainbow here. Now I actually have to submit. Take a look here. Do you see how it filled it in slowly? Because all of those are happening asynchronously. It put the, those letters there immediately. Now if I didn't want it to do that, I could actually just create those divs as empty. So I could create an empty div with no content. So then I might see them fill in, but I wouldn't see them fill in. I, you know, I could retrieve, I, there's so many ways I could animate this or do it differently. So here's the thing. <laughs> this is my acrostic coding challenge finished. We're gonna read this poem. Roadbook Igret is pravnik naktiklu ka bedizmet opagun wirerod. Here's what I would like any of you who are watching or interested to try to do. Share with me at Shiftman on Twitter in the comments. Uh, next time I do a live stream, I'll share some of your results. This code will get posted. Look in the video description for the code. But a couple things. Do this so that the first letter is highlighted. How could you make the first letter bold or capitalized and highlighted in some way? How could you make this more poetic so that you get a full sentence here and it reads more like a poem? And another thing you might think of is what if the acrostic isn't so simple? And I'm going to uh, just Google acrostic for a second because I know an example will come up if I do this. Images maybe? Um, where the, um, the letters don't necessarily have to be the first letter. So how would you create something and line it up like this? And I could always come back and do a part two to this coding challenge if people are really interested, but I'm going to leave. Yeah, I think I better close this window before I get something I don't want to see. Um, but this is the basic idea. I get user input a word, I know when the user has hit a button, I look at each letter individually, I go out to an API, but I could have used other data sources, look up my Markov chain stuff to generate a context-free grammar, maybe parts of speech, tagging, read a .js tutorials, and lots of other my programming with text tutorials to think about ways you could make this more poetic, visualize it in a different way, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm being told in the chat that maybe the max limit for the WordNIC API is 125. Uh, oh, and there's a bug when I hit submit multiple times. It's not really a bug, it just does it again. So that's something you could fix. You could have it erase what it did before or put a nice break in between them or, or something like that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is going to be irrelevant in the future when we're all just like brains floating in some sort of goo. But um, this has been the first coding challenge I've done after a long time, after I had a uh, broken elbow accident, and it's great to be back. Thank you for watching. So I probably was a little off my game here if you're actually still watching this at the end. <laughs> Thank you, and I appreciate it. See you on the next coding train. All right, everyone. I, I did it. I did a live stream. I got Wirecast to work again. I made a coding challenge. It's not my favorite, probably. I did my best. Let me see if I can at least, yes, yeah, Simon Tiger is, um, is uh, so the, the, the IDs of the divs and all of that, definitely, oh look, my, I'm trying to get my uh, iPad music thing to come back. Um, so it's almost seven o'clock. This was not a very long live stream because there was an hour and a half of me with technical difficulties, but I have been up here uh, for uh, three hours <laughs> and it's been a long week. Um, let me, since a lot of you probably weren't here at the beginning, I want to mention a couple things. I want to mention again day.processing.org. If you ever go back and watch this whole live stream, I talked about it a bit at the beginning. I'm going to be there doing a live in-person coding train episode. Um, I don't know what that means yet exactly. And I also want to mention, once again, if you are a high school student or know of a high school student or uh, friends with a high school student or have a child who's a high school student or an older sibling who's a high school student, um, check out itp.nyu.edu slash IMA. Um, this is a new program starting at NYU where I teach called Interactive Media Arts. There's going to be a Facebook Live stream about it where you can ask questions on Monday. Um, and you can tweet me at Schiffman if you have questions about it and I'll put you in touch. You can also tweet at ITP underscore, actually you can tweet at IMA underscore NYU. So uh, what I would love is anybody's interested, 
Go to the Facebook Live, tweet at IMA underscore NYU, and say you heard about IMA through the coding train. That'll make me really happy. It makes me like I'm doing a good job here at my job at New York University. <laughs> um, ah, okay, so uh, treats for those of you who are still here at the end. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, I need to make, bear with me for a second. Okay. I was just trying to do something as like an extra thing at the end. Um, I was going to say, one of the things I'm interested in, so I'm doing physical therapy with this elbow, and the thing that I'm tr doing is getting range of motion back. So you can see, and I'm actually pretty tight right now, if I d uh, use a heating pad and do a lot of stretching, I will get quite a bit further. Um, and I, I'm gonna be doing this for the next few months. One of the things that, I, they, that they do at the physical therapy office um, is, I can't tell if things are working, I'm gonna just go to the Slack channel, um, is that they uh, measure. So one of the things I was thinking about is developing a physical therapy application that measures the angle. I don't know if this is useful or not. Um, you could do something with an accelerometer probably, but uh, with computer vision. So uh, I'm gonna just record a short video of me stretching my arm. And since I have the sleeve on it, it's high contrast, you could probably use computer vision to calculate this angle of the elbow. And the same thing, you know, for going out, you know, this would be, uh, you know, this is zero degrees, and this is, you know, it's probably like 25 degrees right now. I, I can get it to 15 with stretching. Uh, I have this like device that I can wear, it can't, I haven't been able to sleep in it yet, but it's a device that stretches out your arm, you're supposed to sleep in it. I don't know how to do that. Anyway, so if anybody wants to capture these and think about like collaborating and working on a little open source tool to connect to something, uh, computer vision, I don't know if there's better ideas. So that's one thing I was gonna mention. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to see my exciting scar, I don't think there's any trigger warning or being like squeamish here, but you probably can't even really see that. So there's my exciting scar where I had a nice incision. I thought I, I said I would show that at the end because some people asked. <laughs> I do have some uh, really ex interesting photos of me with 32 staples in my arm and all sorts of swollen stuff if you're really interested in that. Okay, so that was my extra <laughs> thing at the end. Um, I am... Uh, uh, happy to take one or two questions before I go. Did this iPad come back? I'm going to get my, uh, not now, uh, put on my goodbye song. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if, any, if you're interested in supporting this YouTube channel, I've had the Patreon on pause. I haven't charged anybody for the Patreon all of July and all of August which I guess is actually all of August and all of September, but on October 1st, assuming I keep this up this month and get back to the machine learning stuff, um, if you would like to join the Coding Train's patron group and Slack channel, uh, patreon.com slash coding train. Um, what else? Uh, support the Processing Foundation, processingfoundation.org. Uh, if you're interested in this new undergraduate, there's a graduate program, by the way, at NYU called ITP that's been around for close to 40 years, but um, this is a new program called IMA. Uh, Frank is asking, are you back on a regular schedule? My plan is to be back on a regular schedule every Friday. Right now, I'm targeting 4 p.m. Eastern time every Friday. I might do earlier, to the, there'll be some time on Friday. I'd love to have a regular time slot. There will be, I can think of two Fridays that I'll miss over the next few months, but at least hopefully extra Friday. Okay, have you also learned in school how to, hello, I don't know that. Please paint your Band-Aid green so we see a floating hand. So this is actually a, what's called a compression sleeve. You don't need to wear it, but it's fabric and it helps with the swelling because it's a elastic fabric. But it just sort of somehow psychologically makes me feel a bit more comfortable. Um, do you think we live in a computer matrix? Maybe. Thank you guys. Uh, for, I also will just say thank you to everyone for, uh, I had so many well wishes and kind words. I have not applied to a single YouTube comment in like two months. I do kind of read them all. I'm kind of really out of the habit of that, but um, definitely um, send me a note at Schiffman on Twitter if you want to get in touch. Uh, I'll mention that at the coding train, if you have questions, 
about logistics and customer service. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But uh, Matt Blanchette, who uh, does a lot of work doing video editing and other type of stuff for the channel, I guess you could call him like the channel manager, um, is now has the keys to the Coding Train Twitter account, so you can follow that. Maybe some more stuff will happen with that account. And I don't want to promise anything too much, and I, maybe I should. Do I dare? Hold on. I have a little treat if you're still watching. Is anybody really still watching? The thing is, I need to, to somehow acquire this. Okay, I'm gonna switch for a second because I've gotta go like into my email. I don't want you to see my email. I will be soon releasing a new music video for the coding train. And I'm going to show you like four seconds of it. Um, but I have to get into my email which you cannot see right now because you're just seeing the green screen. Uh, now I'm reading my email, which is very stressful. <laughs> Don't look at my email. Here it is. Uh, this is a little sneak preview. I could, I'm going to, uh, well, I have to close out my email before I come back to the screen. This is the last thing I'm going to do for those of you who really s stayed through all of this. People are messing with me and saying that they're seeing my email, but that's just trolling, right? <laughs> okay. Um, because then I'm going to have to like do all sorts of annoying things. Um, somebody in the Slack channel who, uh, please tell me that I did this correctly and no one's seeing my email. Uh, okay, great. Um, so now I am going to go back to here and I'm going to show you a short video snippet from the upcoming Coding Train video. <laughs> That's all there is. That's a little sneak preview. That's for all of you who are so kind to be here waiting through all that technical stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and um, I will, that video will come out, you know, I don't want to make any promises, but, you know, possibly, I would say certainly by the end, hopefully by the end of the month. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I can't believe that I'm actually going to have some new content. That traffic on my channel has just gone like, boom. Um, and, I, I, you know, so I, hopefully there's only going to be one new coding challenge out, but I'll be back next Friday. Thanks for watching The Coding Train, and I will see you soon.